As it moves across the ground, the tarantula feels its vibrations. Even the dangerous fer de lance must continuously be on guard in nature's open spaces. Sometimes it will curl up and wait patiently for prey to wander by. But as the night wears on, this one will soon go head to head or fang to fang with a tarantula in a duel to the death. With the hours of the night progressing, more and more tarantulas are on the move. In the trunks and roots of the huge rainforest trees, many an eight-legged hunter lies in ambush. They are very patient. But the pit viper isn't, not on this night. Using special pits near its eyes, it's picking up the infrared signals, the body heat of nearby animals. But this may be more than it bargained for. A life and death struggle ensues. The fer de lance snake is one of the deadliest in the world, but it succumbs to the tarantula's bites. It takes several minutes for the paralyzing substances to show their full impact but the fight has already been decided. The Brazilian salmon tarantula works its jaws up and down to help break up and tenderize the meat. Then the digestive juices start to flow from the fangs. Tarantulas have incredibly slow metabolisms. This one won't have to eat again for many months. When the night fades and day breaks, the rains arrive. For a brief period, the deluge puts a damper on jungle activity. Most forest dwellers have retreated to their hideouts. The showers end as abruptly as they began, and the tarantula leaves its shelter to see what the rains have left behind. Tarantulas don't need to drink a lot, but they do need water to be able to move. Using a kind of hydraulic pressure, they push fluid into their legs to extend them. This species, the Ecuadorian blue femur, was found in 1991. Since then, it's been rarely observed and little is known about its way of life. But like all young tarantulas, it must undergo a rite of passage called molting, and so it retreats to a protected nook. Nearly all tarantulas flip on their backs during a molt. Spiders don't have internal skeletons, so they can only grow by shedding their outer shell, or exoskeleton. Blood is continually pumped through the body cavities until the old skin starts to split.
Smolting can take 2 to 12 hours. It's an extremely vulnerable time for the tarantula. It can't go anywhere or defend itself until the process is complete. When they're very young, tarantulas will molt about four times a year. As they get older and bigger, they shed on average about once a year. Finally, all the body parts are freed and the spider tries out its new skin. But it's in fragile shape. Even the fangs are still soft. The skin is so delicate, it can easily split, causing the spider to bleed to death. It will take several days for the outer shell to harden. Molting also provides a chance to grow back any lost limbs, like missing legs. After all these efforts, the spider is weak and dehydrated. It stopped feeding before the molt, and it will be two or more days before it can eat again. What's left behind is just a shell of its former self. Giant tropical centipedes share their territories with tarantulas. This 10-inch specimen is no exception. Despite its impressive length, it's a nimble navigator and spends most of its life patrolling the ground for food. Centipedes are among Earth's oldest terrestrial animals. These primeval creatures have existed for about 400 million years and some can be highly venomous. Like the tarantula, this centipede is a predator. And even tarantulas aren't immune from an ambush. As quick as lightning and with all its strength, the centipede fiercely clutches the spider and drives its fangs deep inside. Just like the tarantula it's killing, the centipede has two curved hollow fangs which inject paralyzing venom. The centipede is a voracious eater. When it's finished, only a few spider bits and pieces will remain. Humans and tarantulas don't encounter each other very often. The one exception may be in the tropical rainforests, where large sections have been converted into plantations. Bananas, for example. Despite the invasion of their habitat, many tarantula species have adapted quite well to the changed conditions.